One day, I will be gone. Use my teachings wisely. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released in 1990. It follows the legendary Ninja Turtles. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. They're teamed up with their father, Splinter, to fight an ex-protege, a rival, Shredder. Now, Braden, this movie is known for being part of, like, 90s childhood, 90s right. nostalgia. Right. And as you've explained to me, this movie is a bigger part of your childhood. Now, I've, yeah. I've been a fan of the Ninja Turtles, but this was actually the first time I'd seen this movie. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your experience with this movie and the Ninja Turtles. I've probably it? seen this movie, like, 50 times. Okay. Because as a, as a kid, I remember my grandma would take me to the library, and this is one of the only movies, this is one of the only movies, they had, like, a VHS section at the library. And so I would just check out this movie every time I would go because I was like Ninja Turtles. I love Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen this movie a number of times. I love this movie. Uh, haven't seen it in a while until we watched it recently. Mm -hmm. But I'm also just a big Turtles fan in general. I've read a lot of the comics. I've seen most of the shows. I've seen, I think, all the movies. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There might be one I missed. Mm. Yeah. But I'm pretty invested in the Turtles lore. Okay. Whereas... You know nothing or what? No, I mean I'm I'm familiar. Like I remember watching TMNT, like the animated movie. Yeah. I watched some of I think the Nickelodeon show. Yeah. Uh, and I even saw, saw them in like episodes of Power Rangers. You want Rangers? You gotta go through turtles. What are those things? I can't believe it, but I think they're. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm a fan, but I'm not like a fanatic. I know okay. I know about the Ninja Turtles. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, watching this. Yeah, I gotta say, I loved it also. Yeah, were you surprised I was at all by it? Well, I was surprised at how consistent it was with like the lore because a lot of times <laughs> yeah, yeah. when they try and adapt this kind of stuff for like movies or television, there's like stuff that they want to change, and there are like little things like mm -hmm. that. But generally, I could see how this fits entirely. Like, I mean, this might be just the quintessential Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's movie. what I was gonna say. Like, I think most people agree that this is the best one. I know you haven't seen any of the sequels; you probably don't know anything about them, but. Those get a little bad later. They get a little shittier. And then, like, you know, there's the Michael Bay one and stuff. Those are all, like, changing it up heavy. This one movie, this movie specifically, is based on, like, the original Ninja Turtles comic book. Mm -hmm. And then it has, like, slight influence from, like, the TV show. But it was actually put into production before the first cartoon show. Like, mm -hmm. before any of that. So, mm -hmm. this movie is kind of unique in that way. And it is kind of the perfect Turtles film. I like that it's a little serious mm -hmm. and a little silly, you know? Mm -hmm. Because usually... You go one or the other with turtles. You know, you have like the first comic, which is like super serious, and the turtles are swearing and they're cutting heads off and stuff like that. And then you have like the 90s show, which is just all stupid, and the mm -hmm. turtles aren't even allowed to use their weapons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is like the perfect balance. It knows when to throw the jokes in there for the kids, and then it also like makes the turtles characters and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they go through things. Oh, they do. They, they, go, they go through quite a bit in this movie. Uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to hit on. Uh, this movie, surprisingly, has a lot of, like, depression in it. Like, yeah. Like, and it, it's... So, obviously, each of the Ninja Turtles are sort of, like, caricatures of, like, certain traits they have. You know, Michelangelo's yeah. the funny one. Leonardo's the leader. You know, but with Raphael, he's always known for his rage. Yeah. And they exemplify that pretty well here. He has, he has a catchphrase in this movie that I think they, they were only allowed for certain reasons. Can you can remind me what his catchphrase is, Braden? Damn! 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 There's parts where they just, he's like, you know, kind of lashing out at the other turtles. Uh -huh. There's this like really like great shot where he just like screams and the camera like pans yeah. around him. It's like shaky cam. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's some jarring parts of it too that we were just cracking up at, mm -hmm. where he's like, uh, like, like laying in a bathtub, and yeah. it's so, like, the music makes it so serious. <laughs> Before that, Leonardo's sitting there in the chair, and he's like got his head down. Yeah, it's it's, it's horrifying when yeah. you first see it. See it. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like like he had a heroin overdose. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, the shot with Leonardo kind of reminds me of like an album cover. Even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So. I could see that being like a Tupac cover or yeah. something. Just head down like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as we're talking about the turtles, let's talk about some of the other supporting characters in this movie. This movie features Splinter, April O'Neil, yeah. Casey Jones. Yeah. A lot of fan favorites. Right. All the classic turtles characters, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I love, I think most of the characters in this, I think if we're ranking the characters, Splinter is 
what sells this movie for oh me, gosh. I think, overall. He, honestly, he's kind of the main character in a way. Like you, it's either Raph, maybe Leo, you could say, kind of, more sporting, probably more Raph as the main turtle, and then Splinter. Mm -hmm. Because Splinter's the one who has the connection to the villain. Mm -hmm. Splinter's the one who's like focused on the most, put through yeah. like a lot through a lot of turmoil. Yeah. Even stuff. though the movie's not entirely from his perspective, yeah. he is sort of like the crux of the movie. Right, yeah. And we mentioned this before. Splinter in this, the actor does, I think deserves an Oscar. There are parts The actor he, and the puppet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's parts when he's like so, you know, he comes off as so wise mm -hmm. and so, like, soft-spoken. Possess the right thinking. Only then can one receive the gifts of strength, knowledge, and peace. You can tell he's a good father for the turtles, and he's a good ninja master. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's even, like, again, when we talk about the puppeteering, like, there's, mm -hmm. they even do, like, a smaller version of him mm -hmm. that is, does karate and looks hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so Splinter was a standout in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, as far as April O'Neil and Casey Jones go, um, I think April, isn't she supposed to be a little younger than this? No. Like, in the lore? No, this is about the age she is. Yeah, April, so you're probably thinking of the Nickelodeon one. Yeah. The Nickelodeon one was the one that changed that and made okay. her younger. Usually she's a TV news reporter, so she's about, like, 30. Oh, okay, so, okay, so that was something that mm -hmm. I was misinformed on. Is, but is Casey Jones also supposed to be older? Yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, there's different versions of him, too, but, like, they're... Casey and April are generally the same age in whatever okay. incarnation, because usually they get together. Because that was one thing that I was going to mention, is that Casey just seems, he looks like way too old for his character that he's playing in this movie. You think so? I mean, I think yeah. so. Just something about, he just looked like he was in his 50s, and he was playing someone who was like in their 30s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That, that wasn't such a... I think it, it kind of fits, though, because he's this weirdo character. He's yeah. this guy who walks around in a hockey mask and just beats people up yeah. for fun, I guess. Yeah. It's not really explained if he has, like, an agenda. Mm -hmm. Like, was he, like, fighting the Foot Clan? Did yeah. they do something to him? Does he, is he just angry? <laughs> Why was he out there? No, he just kind of shows up. Yeah. All right, dialing it back to the Turtles a little bit. So yeah. that, that was one thing I was going to mention. All of them, you know, have their unique personalities and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I think um, Michelangelo and Donatello kind of don't have a lot to do here. No, they're definitely, like, relegated to comedic relief in the movie. You can kind of tell what roles the characters were, were, are supposed to play in this movie. Like Raph, like I said before, definitely the main character. Mm -hmm. And so I think they just sort of made the turtles around Raph in yeah. a way, you know, like Leonardo, he's gonna be the conflict character, the moral responsibility to Raph. And then Mikey and Donatello, those are, those are for the kids, you, you know? Yeah. Which is weird because you don't really usually think of like Donatello as being like one of the funny ones necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like if anything, you'd be like, oh, Donatello doesn't get the humor because he's yeah. so smart or whatever. But mm -hmm. in this movie, he's kind of just silly. I don't think he does anything like super intelligent or anything. Or like anything. That, to like showcase his traits. Anything really notable at all. Yeah, I at least say. <laughs> Mikey has like some scenes where he's got the nunchuck battle and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, you know, he's got all the jokes. He's got all the best jokes, I, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I think the humor kind of fell flat for me watching it, rewatching it. Mm -hmm. It's just weird. I think they like, it seems like the writers really wanted to make the turtles like quip machines. You know, they're like constantly making like pop culture references and stuff. Well, well uh, maybe I'll fight Apollo and uh, maybe I won't, you know? <laughs> what do you think? Adrian! <laughs> I think the turtles work better when they're just goofy and dumb. Like, so that humor worked for me in the movie. Mm -hmm. When there's like little edits of like Michelangelo like rising out of the sewer really fast, <laughs> like in the little jump scare. That that's funny to me. But there's a lot of moments where they're just like saying one-liners that didn't mm -hmm. didn't quite mesh. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the villain. Yeah. Shredder. Mm -hmm. Shredder, I guess, is like the main baddie for right. the turtles, as far as I'm aware. I know there's others. There's like the brain. He's the people. one we care about. Yeah, yeah he, he's the most important one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I enjoyed him. Uh, yeah, he's kind of just a, a filler character in a way. Like, and that's what that's how I feel about most of the side characters in this. Besides Splinter, Raph, and maybe Leo, like I think. Shredder is just sort of like, fills the role of bad guy pretty well. He's just sort of Darth Vader. This is your family. I am your father. No! April is just girl, and mm -hmm. Casey Jones is just dude. Yeah. You know, th that's just their roles. But that's all you really need in a right. movie like this. They don't push it too far. It's not like they tried to do something with Shredder and it failed. You know, it's just, he's a bad guy, and he has a connection to the rat. 
Yeah. And that's it. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. He just, what, what was their goal? Were they just like robbing? I mean, they're just like mugging people. Oh I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the movie opens and it just talks about like crime. It's now apparent that an organized criminal element is at work, and at the moment, business is good. Passing you know, like, the wallet around. Yeah, they're all pickpocketing each other. So mm -hmm. I guess basically just like they wanted to rule the underworld. And it's Dude. weird because I don't think Shredder was like even looking for Splinter. He just kind of happened right, to come yeah. across him. Uh huh. It, he doesn't have anything to do with their plans no, no yeah because he's just recruiting teenagers to steal wallets for him. yeah i think they're the, the i mean obviously like i think we might be looking into it a little too much maybe for a movie about the ninja turtles no, i don't think so you don't think so no i think this movie deserves a close eye on it okay okay mm -hmm. one of the parallels i noticed between shredder and splinter is that shredder is recruiting teenagers but he's kind of giving them these like impulsive desires mm -hmm. you know he's letting them skateboard underground you know eat junk food you know work for me. He's the bad dad. Yeah, no. he's the bad dad. Mm -hmm. But then you got the good dad with Splinter, mm -hmm. who essentially is like telling his children to be disciplined, you know, train your mind, you know, hone, hone your skills. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's sort of, I think, again, this, this doesn't need like such close examination. Right. But that is really the only purpose for Shredder that I noticed in this movie, and yeah. to be the bad guy. Right, yeah, you gotta fight him at the end. You know what parallel I noticed just now? What? Their names. Yeah. He's called the Shredder. Mm -hmm. He's the Splinter. Ah, They're kind of similar. <laughs> I yeah. never really noticed that before. Wow! In all your years, in all my years of Ninja Turtles, I've never, I've never thought about that. Yeah. Chew on that, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like a pizza pizza. Yeah. A pizza uh, pizza. So there's this very interesting part in the movie uh -huh. when all the turtles have been separated from Splinter and they sort of meditate around mm -hmm. a fire, and Splinter like speaks to them as a, like a ghost, like through the force? Yeah. I am proud of you, my sons. Is that in Turtles lore at all? No. No? No. I mean, I, in this movie's context, I guess that's just their Zen training. It's some mm -hmm. sort of like chi or something. Yeah. I mean, they don't say that in the movie, but like that's what you would assume because ninja. Yeah. But no, the turtles have never done anything. Like they never had powers. Yeah. Unless it's like, that's the point of the yeah. show or whatever. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it, it wasn't like, it, that wasn't really <laughs> something I'm complaining about. That was just something I was curious about. Right. Um, I loved the scene though. I love the way the fire turns blue. I love how you can tell that they just put the splinter puppet like yeah. behind them. They didn't like try and like overlay it with any like CGI or uh -huh. anything. It feels like a level up in a video game because he literally like the fire turns blue and then he looks at them and he's like, you made it. You're ninjas now or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that's their coming of age moment mm -hmm. when they get past their trauma. Yeah. And then they get to fight the bad guy. They get to face Shredder. Yeah. So as the movie comes to a close, there is this fight on the rooftop between mm -hmm. Shredder and the other turtles. Yes. And, turtle, turtles. Turtles. Yeah. And eventually Splinter pulls up. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the action in this movie? Uh, generally speaking, they do a lot to avoid the action. They do as much as they can, which makes sense because they're wearing bulky turtle costumes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fights in this movie where they just like, are in pitch black mm -hmm. or are in smoke mm -hmm. because they're ninjas, yeah. but because they're ninjas, mm -hmm. not because of this movie's budget, definitely mm -hmm. not because of this movie's budget. Mm -hmm. But when the action does happen, it's pretty fun. Like yeah. there's a great fight with Raph on the top of a rooftop. I think that one's like kind of impressive how much they're able to do in that suit, that Ninja mm -hmm. Turtle suit. He's like flipping around doing spin kicks and stuff, which is fun. And then there's the fight inside the like apartment building, like April's mm -hmm. apartment building. That one's kind of fun and energetic. You don't really get to see too much of like, you know, acrobatics or anything that mm -hmm. the turtles are doing. But you know, it works. It's mm -hmm. fine. It's yeah. entertaining enough. Mm -hmm. And then the final fight is a little, as a kid, I remember it being a little disappointing. But as an adult, I kind of like it a lot more mm -hmm. just because like you give Splinter this big badass moment where he just takes out the villain instantly. Mm -hmm. even, even as a kid, I could tell that they did that because they didn't want to ha have Splinter like move his legs. Yeah. He's just a puppet. Because yeah. he's really standing against that wall. Mm -hmm. Like those legs are just dangling there basically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then the turtles like, they attack him one-on-one -on -one for some reason. Mm -hmm. And you think maybe like with this kind of story, they'd all come together and work as a team. Mm -hmm. No. No, they just try their own thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Splinter just solves it for them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which is good, though, because Splinter's kind of like the main character, like I said, and he's the one with the backstory and the connection to the villain. So it's good that he beats him. 
And there's this little bit they added on right after <laughs> Splinter's defeated that yeah. I think me and you thought was kind of jarring. Uh-huh. Uh, Casey jo so when Splinter falls off, not Splinter, when Shredder falls off this building, he lands in a trash compactor. <laughs> yeah. And Casey Jones <laughs> turns it on. He has a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Casey Jones. Oops. Yeah, so it's implying that it crushed him to death, and I haven't seen the sequels. I assume he survived. He comes back. In okay, the okay, one. okay, great. Yeah, yeah. But li leaving off on that, I'm like, no one is like surprised that Casey Jones is a murderer. Uh huh. And he, and he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's so coy about it too. He makes a little joke. I don't yeah. know what, what he says, but he's like, whoa, yeah. bombs away or yeah. something like that, and, and then he just pulls the lever. Yeah, and then they just move on, uh -huh. which I guess was fine. The movie had to wrap up. The villain was defeated. I guess it, we didn't really need to see Splinter in jail. Right, yeah. But I just thought that was... <laughs> I don't even know if the turtles saw that. Like, I feel that maybe, <laughs> maybe Casey just, like, did it off screen, like, did it while they weren't looking, and the turtles are just like, all right, let's go arrest him, you know, let's, yeah. just, let's tie him up. Yeah, and then they, they open the trash compactor, <laughs> and they're just, just little like... little mangled like, shredder corpse. He looks like one of those, like, you know, metal scrubbers you use, like, on, 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 on like, your dishes, <laughs> after he's been, like, crushed like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I mean, the, uh, again, performances in here... They vary. Yeah. What What do you think about the the costumes though? I liked them a yeah. lot. Like because you know when I was a kid, I think and I saw those for the first time. I'm like, uh, that looks cheap. Really? But now that I'm older, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, but you know they they were trying. It's it's sort of charming. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it worked for me. How did it work for you? Uh, so for me, I have like the opposite reaction to you as like a kid. When I was a kid, I was like, that's the Ninja Turtles. Oh my God, they're real. You know. As an adult, though, like. There are a few scenes where they're just a little off, mm -hmm. which I wasn't expecting because I just remember them being perfect in mm -hmm. my mind. But like, there's a few times where like Splinter will be like lecturing Raf, mm -hmm. and like he'll be like looking off to the side, and it's like you can't really tell what his facial expression mm -hmm. is supposed to be. So it just looks like he's like zoning out or something, or like not alive. He's just mm -hmm. going like yeah. while Splinter's talking to him, mm -hmm. and then. There's a few other times where the mouth movements aren't quite right, like the mm -hmm. lips just like they flap in the wrong way. Yeah. But other than that, like they're good, and I'm surprised at how much I viewed them as characters. Yeah. You know? I will say there were a few parts in the movie where like I I didn't notice it as much, and like yeah. I kind of like came to realization. Yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah, I'm, watch snapped. I'm watching these people in turtle rubber in rubber turtle outfits speak mm -hmm. about their rat. Master. Right, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh -huh, it all zones in for you. Yeah, um, but it wasn't, but but still, it wasn't so jarring that like I couldn't watch the movie and I couldn't focus. Right, the standout costume is like Splinter. Mm -hmm. I think they really just sell it with Splinter because mm -hmm. there's scenes where he's like tied up and he looks like Christ, like yeah. <laughs> chained to a building or he's chained to like a wall and his hair is like ruffled and he's like crying mm -hmm. and it's it's gorgeous and it's like it really it's it's kind of a tearjerker cuz yeah. it's like you're watching a little animal be beat up you yeah. know and it's sad mm -hmm. ratings time rating. before we get into ratings oh though Vanati, i have a little secret about this movie okay so i know you thought you were watching a big budget ninja turtles mm -hmm. movie but what if i was to tell you that this is the most successful indie movie of all time what? <laughs> <laughs> so technically speaking, this movie was made before the cartoon, mm -hmm. before any of that was happening. So for a while, people were not latching on to the idea of a Ninja Turtles movie. Mm -hmm. When you think of indie movie, I know you usually think of like, you know, not big studio. That's typically what the word indie movie means. Mm -hmm. And that's how like a lot of people classify it. And this movie constantly lost its studio mm -hmm. while it was filming. It constantly shifted around and changed and they were constantly running low on budget and they didn't know if they were gonna make it. So a lot of people have technically classified this movie as the highest grossing indie movie of that time because it was released outside of the standard studio system. Wow. Yeah. I bet you didn't think that. No, I didn't. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, with Ninja Turtles, you know, there's certain IPs that you associate with certain companies, like right. Warner Brothers DC, mm -hmm. you know. I guess I never really thought about like, what does Ninja Turtles belong to? Exactly, yeah. And you, you think of them as like, always having been iconic, but now it's like, it's weird to think that at one point someone was like, don't green light that. Yeah. Don't green light that Ninja Turtles movie. People are not gonna watch that. Mm -hmm. And then it made a fuck ton of money, you know? Wow, what a fun fact. Yeah, what can I say? Ratings time? Ratings time. Rating this movie is kind of weird because you know, it's a nostalgia movie for me. It's a classic movie. 
and I'm rating it on the basis of it being a Ninja Turtles movie, I think I'm going to go like four out of five mm -hmm. because I think it works great as a Ninja Turtles movie. It's paced pretty well. You know, you're not sitting there for a while. It gets in, it gets out. It does exactly what you need it to do. And there's not much I dislike in this movie outside of just like some of the humor not working, the suits not always working. Mm -hmm. That's really it though. Yeah. Uh, I found myself laughing. Mm -hmm. I found myself engaged. Mm -hmm. And I left this movie it with a positive feeling, you know, mm -hmm. and that's not always how you're going to like rate a movie higher just because you felt good after watching it. Yeah. But I mean, when a movie ends on a good note like that, I'm going to concur with you, Brayden. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Okay. All right. Pretty solid. I think it was a solid movie. I enjoyed it. I'd be curious to check out the sequels, but I'm not like yeah. rushing to I'll it. Give you, I'll give you a rundown of the sequels. Okay. The second one called Secret of the Ooze. Mm -hmm. That one... More mon more monsters they fight, like they fight other mutants, and it's kind of fun, more silly stuff. Basically, the studio came in and they were like, make it more for kids. And so the turtles never use their weapons. Mm -hmm. They're just like hitting people with toys and like using random stuff. And there's a vanilla ice wrap in it. Okay. And it's kind of cheesy and fun. Not as good as this movie. Mm -hmm. The third one, skip entirely. Mm -hmm. The suits are downgraded. The humor sucks. The turtles go to like ancient Japan and they just fight like... A samurai okay. like not even like a not even like a turtles villain yeah so skip the third one check out the second one if you're really interested maybe one day we'll check out the michael bay one yeah honestly i'd be down to because yeah. i haven't seen those in like years and those got like a lot of hate but also some praise at the yeah. time it was kind of unclear what people felt on those well I and think. also we have a new ninja turtles coming out yes very soon yes and i'll be excited to watch and review that as well Braden. hell yeah. Well, let's say cowabunga and bid the video adieu. Wow. I really don't have anything to offer you guys except for a frozen pizza. Let's go for it!